December 16th meeting of the Ethics Board for the City of Tallahassee. We're here in the second floor of City Hall. It is 4 o'clock, so we're on time. Uh, first time we've done that for a while. Um, <laughs> the first item on our agenda is the minutes from our November 19th meeting and our December 2nd meeting. Does anyone have any comments, corrections, edits, omissions, etc.? Seeing none, Mr. Smith moves and Ms. McNeil seconds the approval of the minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The minutes are approved. Um, Mr. Sims, you let me just go ahead and recognize you now. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a presentation uh, that I'd like to present today. And in my own infinite way of working with this board over the years, I found out that rules are very important. Uh, I remember the first time that I started preaching, Mr. Hearing, my pastor told me, say, you find a friendly face and you focus on that friendly face. And if you can't find a friendly face, find a friendly spot on the wall. <laughs> and so Miss um, McNeil have been that smiling face for me. And what I love about Ms. McNeil, real ethics is not when the camera is on, but when it's no one's looking. And whether you all believe this or not, but I've got some real good white friends. And one of my white friends called me one day and they said, uh, Stanley, wh what, what have you done to uh, Ms. McNeil? And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, man, we were talking about you and not in the best of light, but she said one thing. She said, well, Ms. McNeil says he has a good heart. And that's what we need on this board. It's individuals on this board with a good heart that can look beyond individuals like me, faults, and see their need, hear their concern. And so I wanted, this is going to be her last board meeting, and so I wanted to give her something, and so I got to do this ethically right. Please watch this. Okay, ma'am, I need you to give that to her. Can you give that to him? <laughs> so if we miss a, mem a memo or something. So, you know the giver of the giver? You know the depreciates the tickets after you give it to the other person? <laughs> Here's what this is. Also, this depreciates the bag because we all know that this is not her birthday, so you can't charge the real full value of the gift bag because it's not your birthday. Is that right, Ms. McNeil? That's correct. And these are the T-shirts that we sold for $15 in the passage of Amendment 4. Well, we already know it's been passed, so we can't charge this to the whole $15, so that's been depreciated plus been passed, and that depreciation is gone from the giver to the giver of the giver. And so I just wanted to let Ms. McNeil know that I really appreciate, and not only me, but so many other people in this community appreciate that you give up your time to uh, help Tallahassee citizens address such a critical issue a critical issue. And I must say, I'm a little hurt and disappointed to be losing you, you know? Um, you are a person with very few words, but when you do speak, it holds volume to this board and your history and your knowledge as to where we have come from as well as where we need to go. And I just thank you for that. And I'm also so very elated because this is one of the times I've spoken a long time and Mr. Bryan ain't giving me the eye to cut it off. You understand what I want to be? But I, I just, I felt um, it is important that even though sometimes from this side of this podium, I, I act like I don't value what you guys do, I do. 
but the frustrations and the inequities that we face on here. And even though I may not manifest it in the most proper and, and political way, what I love about you, Ms. McNeil, and I pray that your replacement does the same thing. You never bash me in my face, and I appreciate that you never bash me behind my back. Thank you. Thank and you, after, Mr. Sims. After, after you finish your last meeting, you can pick up uh, your constellation prize. Uh, right. That was that was the announcement of a gift to be given after, after. Ms. McNeil is no longer on the board, <laughs> just just to avoid any uh, appearance of impropriety. Ms. McNeil, thank you for your kind words. I appreciate you. Okay. Um, next on the agenda is the um, ethics officer report. We have the summary of activities. I think we can delay that until the next meeting when our ethics officer is here. I, will, I should have announced she has an excused absence uh, before we had uh, moved our meeting from Tuesday to Monday so that we could have Mr. Smith uh, available. Um, she had planned a, a trip with her daughter and is out of town on a, uh, a pre-planned and uh, prepaid trip. So um, she is excused. Uh, the, on the monthly report of issues received, there is only one new item. It's item 186. I think everybody has seen a copy of that. It was a concern about an office in the city, the spending within an office in the city. Uh, that uh, has already been passed on to the city manager since it did not uh, involve anyone within the, uh, the action of any person within the jurisdiction of this board as, as of the date of that complaint. Um, the recommendation of Ms. Meadows Keefe was that we close that. Does anyone have any objection to that recommendation? So seeing no objection with, without, and without objection, it is closed. The um, next item is a monthly budget report. Is there anything on there that anybody uh, has any comment on? And I would uh, thank Ms. Atkins, who's been putting those together and, and doing uh, a great job of modifying the, the format of their, that report, as this board has requested over the last several months. Um, the item after that is the, uh, the, the two items ac actually after that are the public records requests made of the city, the, the full list, and then the, the partial list of those that the, the city identified as, as uh, um, bigger requests for them, more, more work intensive requests for them. Are there any of those that anyone sees that they want followed up? They, they should have been posted. They were. Um, I, th I, think they, I think they were posted. I don't think we put them in the back because they were posted. But they, they would be online, Mr. Sims. Um, and of course, if, if anybody sees anything between now and the next meeting, if you will simply tell Ms. Meadows Keefe um, she will, will put it on the, the next agenda and can get whatever additional information. So, uh, you know, it, it's a good opportunity if, uh, if you see anything at any time, it doesn't have to be raised during the meeting. Uh, the last item is th item 3F, which is the uh, report number 907. This is the um, audit report on uh, Star Metro P card purchases. If um, anybody has any questions, you can raise them now and we'll have them for the next meeting. Otherwise, what I would suggest we do is wait until the next meeting and either have Ms. Meadows Keefe do a summary for us or um, invite someone from the, the city auditor's office to do a summary for us if, if the members feel that's important. Remember, this they were just looking at P cards, by basically the bus system, uh, and I think found that uh, they were by and large, used appropriately. They found, as, as audits often do, and I would expect the audit of us will do, they found a, a few things that, that uh, they weren't sure about or that, that uh, could be improved in the future.
And I think their, their number one documentations were the timeliness and the uh, level of documentation, which, you know, can be an oversight, but can also become kind of a, a bad trend in any sort of purchasing situation. So, questions, comments? You okay if we do a, 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 slight, a slightly better presentation than my bumbling one just now at the next meeting? All right, we will uh, put that on, we'll continue that on our next meeting, but you will be uh, aware, more aware of its existence at that point. The next item on our agenda is the uh, discussion and selection of our next ethics officer. And before we start talking, um, everyone should have gotten a copy of the uh, results, my summary of the uh, reference checks. Uh, mm -hmm. so, some were shorter, some were longer. The longer ones typically were because they were with people that I didn't know and didn't, and so I, I took more copious notes. The, the ones that were, the shorter summaries tended to be people I knew who I felt I could uh, summarize their comments because I knew them pretty well. So don't take the length of any of those as, as meaning anything. I think the, the longest one was probably twice the length of the shortest one. I, I would tell you all of them were very positive. Uh, there were a, a couple that were um, the, the kind of recommendation I would love to get someday and suspect I never have gotten in my past. Um, <coughs> but I, I tried to, to note, down, note everything that uh, was said that was relevant to the jobs. And the last point on each one of them, they asked me what I wanted to know. And I said, just basically tell me how long you've known the person and what you think about them and their work ethic. The only question I asked specifically was how they thought the person would do working as pretty much a solo practitioner, office in City Hall, working with city employees, but they're really, city employees are not really the ethics officer's co-workers because they could come under the ethics board. So uh, that was the last bullet in each one of them that had a, an arrow next to it as opposed to a, a circular bullet. It was kind of their response on that particular point. And again, on, on all three applicants, I got good responses to that. I don't think there was, there was anything that rose to the level of uh, any kind of red flag. Um, we will need to talk about, either before, during, or after the selection of the person, we need to talk about the start date. We need to talk about the salary. I would assume that we would do a letter formally, a written letter formally offering the job to the person we select. Uh, and that we not, I would suggest that we not do a letter to the other two people in case the person we select for whatever reason turns us down. Um, we could let the other two people know that, you know, they, they weren't our top choice, but uh, until we actually have someone accept our letter, I would suggest that we not uh, bail on the other two. And we also need to let the person know that since the city processes their payroll and such, they will have to go through the, uh, the city process, which will include a background check and some other uh, I'm sure copious paperwork and computer forms. Um, so it, there, there is a, a little bit more work for the applicant to do, but primarily from our perspective, start date and salary, whether we want to pick a salary or uh, delegate someone on the board to go negotiate a salary, however we want to handle those two things, we will need to decide along with a final name. Okay. Um, anybody want to go first in terms of their thoughts on Selections? Okay. Mr. Chair, I'm happy to go first. Uh, all three candidates are well qualified and would make ethics, would make a fabulous ethics officer. Um, I thank them all for putting forward their names and taking the time to meet with us and uh, being willing to serve in this capacity. Uh, if you would like, I can rank. Would you like us to? Actually, let me interrupt you for one second. I got ahead of myself. Uh, Mr. Bishop, you had a card in on item, agenda item three. You're fine? Okay, I'm sorry. That's okay. Ms. Graham, go ahead. Um, how, would, would, how would you like us to proceed? Would you like me to rank the order or? Well, I don't know. What do you all want? To, uh, we could just say, uh, rather than having to go through ranking, we could just say our top choice. And okay. Because it, it could be that we're already in a five to two or six to one situation. Um, so I, wh however you, what, whatever you want to do, I, I don't have a well, plan. Okay. Well, my top choice, and again, no disrespect to the other two, because I believe they're all incredible and would all do great jobs, is uh, Mr. Keith Powell. Okay. Mr. 
Mr. Powell is also my first choice as well. Mine too. And Mr. Neal. I have Floyd. Okay. I have Keith Bell. Okay. And Ms. Barr. Floyd. Floyd. Um, well, what I what I was uh, hoping to do was avoid having to pick because I am hugely torn. <laughs> um, I think I, because of his service on the uh, State Commission on Ethics and the, the level of knowledge that he would bring and thinking particularly that, about the ability to do ethics training, which is something that we don't see that this board has responsibility for. Um, and uh, knowing uh, Mr. Floyd gets, gets high marks in training, Mr. Faircloth has done training, uh, but Mr. Powell can bring war stories to training, whether it's the uh, young people who work as lifeguards part-time at the pool or whether it's senior management. I think I am with Mr. I'm, I'm going to go for Mr. Powell, vote for Mr. Powell. Um, well, we are at 5-2. That's just as an informal poll. How, how do board members want to proceed? I'd like to move that we offer Mr. Keith Powell position of ethics officer for the Tallahassee Independent Ethics Board. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay, the, uh, unanimously for Ms. Atkins' purposes. Um, Now, moving to um, start date, I think that we have talked about the fact that we don't have a lot of budget for overlap. Uh, I believe Ms. Meadows Keefe's date uh, is asking our board attorney, I think it was, it was after our, our February board meeting. Mm -hmm. So if we started person in, at the, in the, the third week of February, there would be just a couple of days overlap, or the second week of February, there'd be a week and a half overlap, which we could afford, uh, with, without question afford. I think Ms. McNeil is going to tell me we can afford a little more than that. Um, so we could start anywhere uh, between now and, and uh, the third week of February. Um, so what, what would be the preference of the members? Oh, well, first, let me, let me do this. I'm sorry. I, I, had, uh, I, I did have a card on, from Mr. Wilcox on the board member. Okay, okay. Um, I'm doing a bad job of managing cards here. Um, do, do the members have a, a, a preference or a thought about start date? When, was, when would the pay period start? I... I Ms. Atkins, uh, the, the, oh, you're paid monthly or bi-weekly? <coughs> bi-weekly. And, and when would the, when would the, what's the, do you know the date of the next pay period? In February. Or, Mr. Chair. You indicated that it could be uh, what you said was any time between now and February. Uh, it's my feeling that we should start. He should start as soon as he is available. If right, that's possible. Well, and and I'm I'm sure he would. He obviously would need to give the the Commission on Ethics right. uh, some some notice. So I would think it would be uh, no earlier than sometime in early January, which would give us yeah. at the most six or seven weeks of overlap. Um, so, it, 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 without knowing specific dates, and Mr. Smith has a good point, we ought to make it coincide probably with a pay period. So, would would you want to talk to him about the first, the beginning of the first pay period in January? Is that what I'm hearing? Or the just, sec, second pay period in January? I would probably be um, in favor of closer to the time that 
uh, a current ethics officer is leaving, understanding we need some onboarding time, but I don't see why we would need to have a month or a month and a half of overlap. Okay. I, I agree with that, and particularly since Mr. Powell comes to this position, assuming that he accepts with uh, so much experience already. Okay. Um, well, then uh, we will, during the break, Ms. Atkins will find out for us when the, what the pay periods in February are. And we can pick, uh, we'll, we'll probably be between one and two, depending on whether we want virtually no overlap or 10 days of overlap. And we can make that decision, uh, that final decision after the break. Um, in terms of salary, as I recall, uh, Mr. Powell, and I'm, I'm probably going to get this a little bit wrong, Mr. Powell's current salary was around 74, and he was requesting 90. 68. What do you have in the 70s? Ooh, so was it 60? I had it in the 70s. Oh. Um, he, he gave us a letter. I know. Um, What, what he said in his letter to us was that his current annual salary was $72,113.96. So if, if Excuse we, me, Mr. Chair, how much again? 72 seven, what? 72,100. Okay. So, and, and he was requesting 90. So what are the board's thoughts? This is always fun to do in a I public know. meeting. I know, it is. Um, 90 seems fair to me. Um, what are we paying now, like 93 or something? No, I, well, think, I, think our current, I think our current ethics officer is making right at 100. Well, Just remember, it, I think when the city hired her, she was, I think it was in the, the high 80s, and then the city's pretty much 3% a year every year, unlike the, the, well, the state. So that, that's the one thing anybody coming into the job can expect probably regular pay increases. And since all three of our applicants either are or were state employees, that'll be a, a new phenomenon for them. So if uh, we offer 90, uh, <coughs> we bring the city some savings yes. compared oh, to what they already have. Our budget. And he'll also be receiving an increase what he currently has. Um, and if he said he was uh, willing to accept that, that sounds fine to me. I agree, and I, and I also think this is a solo responsibility. I mean, he has sole responsibility for this position, whereas he worked with a team at the uh, State Commission on Ethics, so more responsibility. Um, does anybody know what percent increase that is? I'm, my, my percent brain is not working. <laughs> Yeah, this is where we all find out. What the, the, this is why I'm, why I'm, I'm not a veterinarian, Mr. Chair, because if I had been able to do math, I would have been taking care of animals right now, which I would have enjoyed, by the way. <laughs> That's a 25% increase. Uh, leave, it, leave it to a banker. This is so difficult. Um, what I was thinking of doing is dividing, taking it halfway between what he makes now and what he requested. And, and, but I'm willing to go with the will of the board. That'd be a 12 and a half percent increase, which is still significant. Or we could go, or we could make it 15. What would have? I'm going to rely on Ms. Yeah, McNeil, who actually knows you. how to do this stuff. <laughs> what would a 15 percent increase? Be? Ten eight, so that'd move him to eighty three. When he said he would accept ninety, that mean that that was his minimum. I I don't know. He what he said he said is what he said in his letter is if selected for the ethics officer position, I would request a minimum annual salary of ninety thousand dollars. Would request. Would request. So that's his side of the negotiation. But we will enter into negotiation. I mean. He rejects that we would have to which we will either have to do in a board meeting or we'll have to delegate a board member to go and have that conversation with mr powell 
I do not feel strongly about $7,000 if he's such a qualified candidate. Um, All right. So we're saving money. Yeah, yeah. And it's, yeah. it's, it's, I think and he's I, definitely <laughs> worth 90 And Ms. Barr is not moving her head, so I can't re I, I'm trying hard to read your thoughts, but my vision's not that good. Well, no, I, was, I was fine with the 90 now, Okay, so um, it sounds like uh, Mr. Smith moves that we offer him the job at 90000 is that correct? And I think Mr. Ray seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Uh, so we are there. We will send him a letter um, offering him the, uh, the job at his requested salary, which, which will give us uh, about 10000 back, actually, in our budget, as Ms. McNeil has pointed out. Um, we will figure out the, uh, the start date We'll offer him, in the letter, we'll tell him that the start date would be a February start date, but we'll, we'll figure out the, uh, well, at, and we'll figure that out after the break so we can come back to that so that we can be clear with him so he has a date to give his current employer. Um, that said, I, I just, I personally want to thank um, all the applicants, yeah, partic they... particularly our, our, our three finalists, because I, I got to tell you, um, I don't much like cold calling people and having conversations, particularly when they don't know why I'm calling them or in some cases who I am because <laughs> I wasn't trying to sell anything, but it took me a while to convince some of that. Um, it, those reference checks were the highlight of my last two weeks. They were such good people and such positive references and people saying, we don't want to lose him. We'd like to keep him. He's eligible for rehire. You know, he was my go-to guy. Statement after statement after statement. Um, just tremendously difficult choice, in my view, among our, our finances. Um, any other comments on that? Okay, we have finished item four. That moves us to item five on our agenda, which is a discussion and selection of a board member who would sit in Ms. McNeil's chair. I do not say who would replace Ms. McNeil. Uh. Notice. Uh, Ms. Baer, I have a card from you on this item. Just really short. We have a small pool of applicants, which is very different than what we usually have. And I don't know if it is this time of year or what, but I would recommend that you guys extend the application deadline until after the new year and revisit the applicants at that time. I think that you'll get a whole lot more there. Okay. I, and I, I will tell you that Ms. Baer shared with me a month or two ago um, from, from some other ethics board their uh, list of qualifications for what they want in terms of their members, and it was like, ex-judges and ex, you know, I mean, people who had, who came in with not just, not just community experience, but very specific experience related to ethics. And I think that uh, um, I, I would read into her comments uh, some of, of those kinds of uh, desire for those kinds of qualifications in our applicant pool. Uh, she's nodding her head, so apparently I am at least able to read one mind, which is worrisome. Um, so, uh, we have six, six applications before us. It's, everyone should have gotten. Um, again, what is the will of the board? How long is this advertised for? Um, this, I do not know specifically when the city advertises. We can find out when Ms. Atkins comes back. I want to, I, it, it goes through the, uh, City Treasurer Clerk's office, um, and I, I may have. Let's see the earliest one of these. The er, it looks to me like the earliest one was submitted on November 9th. So it's it was out there. It's a holiday. Exactly during yes during the and the last one I see came in on on December 6th. So definitely it was the, over the, the Thanksgiving break. And, and I would agree, in the past when we've had applications, uh, we've had vacancies, we've typically had 30 or, or so applications. I agree. I'd like to move 
that we extend the application period uh, at least through the holidays and um, maybe revisit this in, in, in our January meeting or, or February meeting. And, I, and given our <coughs> history, we will miss you, Ms. McNeil, that we have operated with uh, not a full board for most of the, <laughs> you're nodding your head. So I don't think that that would inhibit uh, the board um, from, from doing what we need to do in the meantime while we're considering a greater pool of applicants. Okay. Um, you want to um, open the, let's see, our February, if, if we, before, the, before mid February, would you want to extend the application date contingent on what we do with uh, meeting days to maybe February 10th? So that would allow us then to come in and make a decision in February. So mm -hmm. if the person's here, they could actually then sit in the board meeting. We, we might, we would miss as little as one meeting That's and maybe perfect. two. So I'm going to take that as a motion I'll from Ms. Graham to a second. And, a, and a second from Mr. Payne to extend the application period. Um, I think there's at least one person here uh, who, um, well, um, so we will do that. And uh, all in favor of that, well, any discussion of that motion? Any further discussion of that motion? I just would point out that we just completed the most important decision of the, any of our tenures on the board, I think, and did that with a full compliment. So now I think it's worth waiting until we have a, a full array of uh, applicants to choose from. Okay. And um, if you want to um, share, and I, I looked for it before this meeting, couldn't find it. If you want to share with me again that the document you shared about the, the qualifications for, that some and, other board has said. Chair, could I, could I, and I also want to say that's in no disrespect to those that have already applied. I mean, this is just that we feel that during this time of the year, it is appropriate to give a little more time so more people who might be interested right. be able to take advantage of applying if they so wish. Right. It, it, it clearly is, is a, a, the pool represents about 20% of what we usually right. get. So I, I think clearly the holidays had a, a chilling factor. Uh, unlike when we looked at the ethics officer, we were uh, flooded with applications because that was b well, b you know, a month or two before the holidays. So that was, was not an issue. But this, this appears to be uh, very different from what we've experienced in the past. Um, okay, so we have a motion, a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay, so we are, let me make a note, February 10. Um, on the audit of the ethics board, um, I did have a chance to uh, talk directly with the auditor shared with them that uh, one-page document that I had given everybody last month that was kind of my summary of what the auditor had suggested. Uh, we went through that in some detail, and I think I, you, you should have received a, a, a copy of their one-page response, what the audit document would look like. So this would not be looking at, at every uh, payroll period and every P-card purchase. It would be selecting a, a sample of them, but it added in the other things that the uh, City Auditor had recommended. Uh, they were comfortable with that. The price is going to stay the same. Uh, they, they kept the workload similar by, by doing a sample rather than, than checking every uh, uh, purchase. They did add in the, um, for each, each of our uh, attorneys, the largest bill that we got, which are typically going to be the bills when we, were, we got from our attorneys over the years when we were redoing our bylaws or, or doing recommendations to the City Commission on Ethics Ordinances. So they're going to, to add that, so we'll get a, a much more detailed look at the board's expenditures on P-Card and other purchases, a sampling of all of the uh, payrolls, and a uh, sample of the largest of our uh, attorney expenditures. So a, a more complete list. Did anybody have any uh, problems with, with that? Will this not be an audit of procedures or anything like they, that? They, um, they are going to audit us against the city's procedures for purchasing. They are not going to look at our, like our bylaws. They said that's, that's really not what they do. They, they, they want to look at something that attaches to spending. Um, if, if we want at some point uh, to have that done, I suspect we might be able to get something done maybe 
through one of the universities, get uh, somebody to, to look at our policies and procedures and make some recommendations to us. But that's, a, I think, a, a different thing from a, a CPA firm. Okay, so without objection then, um, they're supposed to be sending me a, a, a document to sign and I will go ahead and sign that with those revised audit procedures that are uh, in line with what the city auditor recommended to us. Item seven would be our <coughs> meeting schedule. Uh, I was hoping Ms. Atkins would be back for this. Um, we had, I had originally, without talking to our board attorney, proposed that we move to the second Monday of every month because this room would be available, which it is not on the third Tuesday of the month unless we want to move our time back a couple of hours. I mean, if we were going to meet from six to nine, we could have this on Tuesdays. But but uh, that seemed to me to be getting a little late. Uh, if we wanted to keep this time slot, we have to move to a different day. But I think, Mr. Reed, you, are, you have a conflict on the second Monday of the month. In the yes, I have a standing meeting every second Monday and second Tuesday of each month. Um, let's... let's uh, skip over this one for a minute until uh, Ms. Atkins get, gets back, because I know she's been working on this. Uh, if we jump to item eight, Mr. Reed, um, on the final orders from our uh, closed meeting, the, the three items that we closed, and I don't believe, by the way, we have the transcript of that back from the court reporter yet. I thought we would by now, but I have not seen it unless Mr. Reed has seen it. Um, I don't think I have, I have okay. yet. Okay, so, so we have not seen that at some point. Um, we will have that to share. Uh, obviously, we'll have to redact uh, the portions of it that relate to the uh, fourth case that, that was considered. But, um, Mr. Reed, would you be prepared to go over those three final orders just in summary fashion? Sure. <laughs> kind of dropped that one on you at the last second. Yeah, I didn't know it was coming, but I, I think that should be okay. Um, okay, so it looks... Everybody's packets the same as mine. It looks like they're a little out of order. But um, there was 2019-179 was the final order. Uh, in Ray Diane Williams Cox. Uh, this was based on an anonymous unsworn complaint uh, regarding an online advertisement for the Capital City Chamber of Commerce Advantage Conference. Uh, this board uh, closed the issue uh, based on the issue it lacked legal sufficiency. Um, so this was uh, dismissed against her as not legally sufficient. Next, we had, I th think they may be a little out of order, 2019-181, um, In Ray John Daly. Uh, this is a complaint. Uh, this, was also, this was done by email <clears throat> on October 16th regarding... Uh, this ongoing issue we've discussed previously about an automobile dealership commercial. Um, it also identified him making a statement from the dais during a procurement decision uh, that the complainant felt might be inappropriate. Um, the ethics officer recused herself from this matter just as she did the other, and we'll discuss her recusing herself from matters in a couple of items on the agenda. Uh, but this item was also... Uh, dismissed um, with prejudice and closed for a lack of uh, legal sufficiency. And then and I think that uh, yeah, I'm not sure I got a lot of pages that are the same, but I think um, in that one as well as the prior, the Diane Williams Cox, we did provide some kind of what you would call dicta, I guess, non-binding language, but persuasive to the commission to try to avoid these types of circumstances where their likeness may be used in an advertisement uh, that may not be necessarily for city business. Uh, and that was just our personal recommendation to them, something we agreed upon in our shade meeting. Lastly, it was 2019-183, also against uh, Mayor Daly. Um, this uh, was based on a hand-delivered complaint regarding his interactions or uh, uh, allegations regarding how he's handled the 
current ethics officer, and this issue was also dismissed as not being legally sufficient. And those were the three uh, complaints. We have a fourth complaint that is still in the shade, subject to an investigation, and is not yet public. Okay. Any, so everybody was there, obviously, for the, the discussion on those three. We got the final written orders, uh, which were obviously not written until after our closed session. Any questions of Mr. Reed concerning this? I would follow up, and this isn't on, on the agenda in this form, but it relates to those orders. In that, that closed meeting, <coughs> there was some discussion by the members that, you know, perhaps we should go on record as saying um, we, we think that people need to be careful to, uh, the, to make sure that their appearances at public events for private entities uh, are, uh, cannot in any way be mischaracterized, and that uh, statements concerning campaigns or, or campaign activities should be uh, divorced from uh, meetings where public business, city business is being decided. So you have, I took very quick stabs at their two one-page letters, or one's a half-page, uh, that were handed out. I think they were in, in the back, too. If, if you want to, now, there, there was not a direction in that meeting that we were going to do this. There was just some discussion that, that we, we might want to. So not knowing exactly how to proceed, I went ahead and, and drafted something along the lines on each of those. These could be combined into one letter if you want to do something. Or we could uh, let, the, uh, let our final orders, uh, which, as uh, Mr. Reed has pointed out, have some dicta, we could just let them stand on their own. So uh, whatever is the will of the body, we can uh, proceed in that direction. Mr. Chair, could I ask that we um, have an opportunity to review these letters and reconsider this at our next board meeting? Absolutely. Does that meet with the concurrence of the other members? Yes. Sure. Um, I, 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 didn't, I didn't specifically put them on the agenda because I wasn't sure. We didn't really decide we wanted to do these, right. but there was that discussion, and I didn't want to. Right. I'm not adverse to moving forward, but I'd like a little more time to be able to review them and then the Absolutely. discuss so, it at the next meeting um, if possible. Uh, Ms. Atkins. If you would, on these two letters, uh, remind me, I will send you electronic copies, and then you can send them out to the members so you have them electronically so you can fix my, uh, my typos and my no, indiscretions. It's not, no, it's just... Um, and, Ms. Atkins, you've been gone. Did, did, did you have some information for us? Okay, so just just... Throw something at me when, when you are uh, uh, ready for us. Um, that would put us on item nine, which Mr. Reed is you, sir. Yes. Um, I think at our emergency meeting a couple of weeks ago, we discussed um, hiring outside counsel for our uh, current litigation. So we discussed the last meeting. Uh, go through it again. Um, I, I've recommended outside counsel because I will be more than likely called as a fact witness not because of prior representation of Ms. Meadows Keith, as was stated in the newspaper, but rather because of my role with this board. I, I would expect uh, other members of this board to be called as witnesses, either a deposition or a trial, if we proceed that far, and um, prior board councils as well, um, probably back to Ms. Marsteller is a possibility. So for that purpose, um, I've recommended that we uh, secure the services of outside counsel for this litigation, and um, I presented the board with three firms that have great reputations in the area of employment law. Uh, there was Coppins, Monroe, Sniffin and Spellman, and Osley McMullen. Um, as I mentioned at the last meeting, Coppins, Monroe had already stated they had a conflict and they had to withdraw their name from consideration. Uh, since we met last, as of late last week, uh, Sniffin and Spellman also has determined they have a conflict, so they've withdrawn their name. Uh, so that leaves us with Ozzie McMullen. Uh, there was a fourth name that was put out by a member of the public at our last meeting on direction of the chair. We did not uh, reach out to that individual and left it to these three. 
Uh, so at this point, that leaves us with uh, the firm of Aussie McMullen, uh, specifically Deborah Minnis, and you should have uh, her bio from the website as well as a separate printout, which is almost the same as what's on the website. Um, I would just like to state that while she does appear to get this through the process of elimination, it shouldn't take away from her great credentials as an attorney. Uh, she previously had served, I think at one point, as backup attorney to this board, but never actually served as counsel to the board. She uh, was a backup designated as Mr. Currington at one point a couple of years ago, uh, but she's uh, very well-versed in the issues of employment law, and I think she'd be an excellent choice. And, and I would point out we do have, um, when, when we hired Mr. Reed, you all will remember that um, we did uh, kind of backup contracts with uh, Mr. Currington and Mr. Claypool. So we have a professional services agreement with Osley McMullen uh, for the, primarily for Mr. Currington, but in our existing professional services agreement, this also covers Ms. Minnis. So we have a, already a written agreement, which probably doesn't cover the, the, the current um, action, but um, we, we, do, we do have a relationship there already. So uh, while we're not, this doesn't require to go through a procurement process, it is uh, something that this board has talked about and considered in the past. And we, we kept both of those, both Mr. Currington, his firm, and Mr. Claypool for times when we might need somebody when, other than Mr. Reed. So that's exactly, uh, while we weren't anticipating this particular action, that's exactly why we did these professional services agreements. So, um, Mr. Reed, are you then recommending that, that the, the board go ahead and engage Ms. Uh, Menes? I am. Um, Mr. Payne. I, first, I'd like to ask, does, do uh, Mr. Claypool or Mr. Currington have experience in employment law? Uh, I know that uh, it, it is not something Mr. Claypool did as executive director, uh, but he would not have been the attorney in the cases. Uh, I know that Mr. Currington did uh, a fair bit of representation of the state in employment law cases. I would tell you that Mr. Currington uh, is uh, nearing a, an unannounced retirement date. So I suspect this uh, litigation is liable to go past his reti retirement date because I did have a brief conversation with him, and he said, uh, uh, Ms. Menace is, is your, your person. I would move that we accept uh, Mr. Reed's recommendation. Second. Okay. Uh, on a motion by Mr. Payne, second by Mr. Ray. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. And, uh, and then I... Can I kind of infer from that motion that we're going to allow uh, our board attorney to go ahead and do that, that uh, negotiation and, and the engagement? Yes. Uh, and to the extent that there's something needs to be signed, I will sign it for the board okay. if we need to do that. Okay? Uh, without objection on all of that. Um, the next item would be bylaws changes. We have two. Uh, Mr. Reed, you want to do these? Sure. Um, oh, me too, however you want to do it. Yes, first and foremost, we have the budget and expenditure procedures. Um, this simply uh, amends our Article 3 uh, with the language as it appears here. Uh, I know with some issues about uh, spending that goes outside the budget, uh, this gives, I think, more transparency so the board is more involved in those types of expenditures. On this, I think it's the flip page. Well, but before you leave that one, okay. the, the shorter one that's Article 3, the new language in Section E, I would draw your particular attention to, to E4, which says basically that we have, our current bylaws say that um, we are going to treat board, the, the board uh, ethics officer as a city employee for all per So we're adopting all of the city policies for everything that relates to city employees for our ethics officer. What this does is it does the same thing related to all of our purchasing, so that in any of our purchasing would need, we would be going on, on, specifically on the record as saying that our purchasing needs to comply with city policies related to purchasing, so that we have a clear set, without us trying to go out and adopt them ourselves, that unless the bylaws say, say something that's in conflict with the 
city policies, that our purchasing will comply with city policies. Since we're spending city dollars, we're spending taxpayer dollars, that seemed fair to me. And it, it puts us on record as not just our ethics officer, but also all of our purchasing, all of our other expenditures are subject to a, a rich set of, of uh, carefully drafted policies the city has. I'm sorry, Mr. Reed, go ahead on the second one. Well, you know, instead of going, uh, did you want to take any action on these individually? Um, what I would say is this would be our, our first formal discussion of these. So under our bylaws, they would come back for actual adoption at our next meeting. So if anybody has any comments or corrections, uh, you can make them now, or you can uh, uh, email uh, Ms. Meadows Keefe or call Ms. Meadows Keefe, and she can do whatever, you know, I mean, obviously we, we have found typos in the past, that kind of thing, or think something you think needs to be worded more carefully. If you will let her know those, those kinds of changes will be made in the uh, final draft that we would adopt at the January meeting. That would be following our bylaws. Okay, so the next would be uh, we add language to Article 9, which deals with hotline calls and complaint procedures. Obviously, this is an issue that's... Um, been one of importance recently because a lot of the complaints that we receive are through the, the hotline or through anonymous complaints. Uh, this, I think, fleshes out some of these procedures. I think when the procedures were initially proposed and adopted, we uh, were looking primarily at sworn complaints because we are limited to impose penalties only on sworn complaints. However, we are not prohibited from investigating and looking into other matters that are not subject to a sworn complaint, but rather like what we've seen just this past, uh, past month, which was somebody dropping something off on a desk, somebody leaving a voicemail, or somebody just sending an email uh, to be kept anonymous. Uh, so this simply fleshes that out and just lays out some procedures consistent with the way we're, we're treating the other issues. A lot of this is, we discussed in the past, if an allegation is made, it's very hard to unring a bell. Uh, we wanted to make sure that if a complaint is made that we um, you know, protect all parties involved and ensure that uh, uh, we don't uh, have, have a negative stigma attached to somebody before we have an opportunity to determine whether there's merit to the complaint. So this would continue what we did in our last closed meeting. If we get an un unsworn or anonymous complaint that involves a person within our jurisdiction in a matter that is arguably within our jurisdiction, we would go ahead and not discuss it in an open meeting. Initially, we would put it into a closed meeting, make a decision, and then announce our decision with obviously a court reporter transcript and such. So it would all become open eventually. But that would protect uh, the in individuals who are well under the, the new jurisdiction of the board who are city employees um, from being uh, in, inappropriately uh, com complained about by someone who just ha has evil <coughs> intent uh, without and is counting on the, the, the news story between the time and they make the complaint and the time we can act. So this, this closes that gap. Uh, and it also puts a, uh, a caveat or a, uh, a condition on our hotline reports that they are, you know, mostly they are received anonymously. Uh, mostly, are they, often they are things outside our jurisdiction, and they are simply referred to um, the uh, to the appropriate authority. So again, we're going on record as saying not everything you call into us or send to us via email is going to be handled as an ethics complaint. Just to put people on notice. So those are really the two things. Uh, Mr. Sims, I, I understand what you're trying to do, but I do have a concern. I have a concern that. The certain population that I represent, we ain't going to feel comfortable going through all of these hoops, especially when you go down into the situation room. Make a decision. They are not a part of that. They don't, people I represent, we, our norm of vocation is eighth grade, ninth grade level. I can't really talk because I want to talk, but when I, I y'all know how I talk up here. And so I'm just concerned about this here because even when this policy came out, there was no clarity. And, and I just, 
I am from one who have been banned from this building for advocating for accessibility. I have a problem with this board changing such a strong, such, such the, the tooth in the grain of what we got without properly educating the people before you do it. And we've done this too many times that I've seen that didn't work out. Something that, and I don't mean this derogatory or personally, something that we all did in good conscience, but wasn't received in the way it was done. Because even today I have issues. Mm -hmm. Your board, there's so much out here of advertising on when this board is, but it's not consistent. On the website it says tomorrow. On the board out there it says at 3.30 today. On the board somewhere else it says 4 o'clock. So it's, I, I don't like the way we're moving this train so fast. And, and, and my last and final point is I, I get what you're trying to do. But these people are not preschool people. The people who you have jurisdiction of are grown folks. And we keep telling our people on the streets, if you see something, say something. And I'm, I'm a little uh, apprehensive that now the ethics boards is say, if you see something and say something, we're going to protect the person. Because that, that I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I need more education, and I'm coming up here. So I, just, I don't see, in my eyes, Mr. Mr. Hearing, the thing with the dealership, it worked. Somebody saw something, they said something, it was corrected. Case closed. And I just don't see this extra need that we got to shield these people. I want you to be conscious. Before I gave my good friend this here T-shirt, I had to check. That's being responsible. And I don't think that it's this board's job to legislate grown people to be responsible, especially when you're going down in the situation room. I don't, I don't, I ain't, I ain't unless somebody ain't told me right, or I ain't got a good grip on this, but I see this here as, as I, I don't see the need for this. When we run for public office, we know what's in there. We know Tallahassee Report gonna throw us out there. We know that Tallahassee Democrat ain't gonna say it right. So why are we protecting these people? I don't get that. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sims. Um, I, I would point out that, uh, and we will go over, I, I assume, early next year the, in more detail the changes that the commission just did to the ethics ordinance. There is, this is in line now with some of the changes that have been made in the ethics ordinance to force us to do some of, some of this kind of stuff. But, Mr. Sims, I would point out that when, when we go into, the, as you call it, the situation room, that unlike these meetings, which may be recorded, there we actually have a court reporter, so every word that is spoken is going to be typed out from those meetings and written down and available after the meeting. So you can see everything that was said, and we will come back like we did tonight um, on the, the, the three cases that, where we went into a closed session and go over what the, the results were. So they, they still get discussion, um, but we're, we're walking a fine line here of trying to be um, – respectful of people on both sides of the issue. So let, let's do, and if members don't have questions on this, May I give you one well, let, me, let me finish. If members don't have questions on this or comments tonight, let's, let's all take what Mr. Sims has said to heart and think about it before our January meeting. Take, take this home with you, and if there is a way to improve it, to tighten it up, and, and again, I, we have to look at this in concurrently with the changes to the ethics ordinance, which change our jurisdiction a little bit as to um, unsworn or anonymous complaints. And, and Mr. Smith, I'm not going to be this long, but here's the solution, Mr. Hearing. We just hired an ethics officer that has good expertise and training. We are very cognizant to the fact that majority of the complaints that we get here are not really for this board. So what I would like to see that we change the de job description for the new EEOC officer down in HR, as well as when you write the, 
the job description for your ethics officer because those two can work together. He has very good investigative skills that this board is needing, which will kind of give us both of what we want over inspector general and someone that you can, because y'all know me, I don't feel like, I don't like to be just thrown off somewhere. I like to be passed off nicely. So when you have the ethics officer and the HR person working together, and he's saying to me, because these are sensitive matter. They locked me out this building. You, you all don't realize it. I'm an ex-felon. It says, Stanley Sims versus the state of Florida. I take that literally. And so when you're poor and you're struggling and you have the tenacity to come up, let's not make it harder for people like me. Let's make it easier for them. And so what I'm, I'm just suggesting is that you broaden the role with your new ethics officer to work in conjunction with your, your new um, EEOC officer, Ms. Angela Heron, is a very good person. Mr. Sims, let's plan to do this. When, when, we, when the new ethics officer, we'll give, them, give them time to, you know, find the, the second floor, um, let's plan, let's you and I sit down with him and have that exact conversation. Would that, would that meet your needs? Because I, I think you I don't want to give him 90 days for you introduce him to me. Uh, no, no, to no, 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 sir. <laughs> no, sir. He's, he's, he's a big boy. And, uh, right. uh, I, I think he could handle you even before 90 days. Okay. But I, I think that's a good conversation to have, and that the idea of, of that interrelationship with the city is an important one uh, to keep in balance the, the interests of this board and, and yet keep these issues moving forward and being resolved. Um, so both of those will be up in January as draft revisions. It'll be our second time we would adopt them or we would modify them at that point and adopt them, or if the modifications are major, we would roll it back another month. Um, with that, it is just after five. Let's go ahead and take a short break, um, and then we will come back, and Ms. Atkins, you're gonna talk to us about pay periods in uh, February, and we're, gonna go, and we're gonna go back to an item that we skipped, because you were out of the room, about the meeting schedule, item seven on the agenda. And then we will continue with items 11 through 16. And with that, we are uh, in recess. When did I lose Ms. Gray? As soon as Ms. Graham walks back. Don't wait for her. Okay, we are back on. Everybody's in the room. Um, we are going to go back to item four on the agenda in terms of the ethics officer. Ms. Atkins found there are three pay periods that start in February. And can you run over the dates for us, please, ma'am? Okay. Okay. Okay, so um, you had talked about the new ethics officer coming on board in February. So we would either go for February offer, at least February 1st, or February 15th to coincide uh, at Mr. Smith's suggestion with uh, city pay period. So mm -hmm. what, what, what say you? I move February 1st. February 1? Second. And a second? Okay. Comments? I just a uh, question that will provide about two weeks of overlap. Yes, Mr. Mr. Reed, is that correct? I mean, in terms of uh, um, when is our meeting in February? I apologize. Well, we haven't set that date yet. Okay. But Why don't we do that first? Why don't you want to do decide that? Decide that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, that would that was going to be the next thing. Um, the meeting schedule. I am advised now. This this is going to get complicated. <laughs> Something new. 
we were changing our meeting time to, <clears throat> to accommodate the CRTPA, mm -hmm. Capital Region Transportation Planning Agency. It's not the PTA, it's the TPA. Um, they do not always meet on the third Tuesday. Sometimes they meet on the third Monday. So one option would be that we could meet on either the third Monday or the third Tuesday, whichever one they are not meeting. And so, and they have, they've set their, their schedule for next year, so we would go ahead and we'd have a fixed schedule, but we would flip back and forth. We'd probably go four or five months on the Monday and the next four or five months on the Tuesday, if people can accommodate that. Our other option would be, since they have a hard stop time when they meet of 4.30 to allow a little bit of transition, we could meet in this room, we could stay on the third Tuesday of each month, but when the CRTPA is meeting, we would meet from 5 to 8 rather than 4 to 7. So that would mean about half the time we'd be meeting an hour later. Those would be our two probably easiest options and still have access to this room the majority of the time. Ms. Atkins is nodding at me, yes. Mr. Chair, thinking um, through what Mr. Sims said earlier about there being some confusion about times and dates. I think it is better to stay on a consistent schedule, even if we have to fluctuate an hour, you know, later every once in a while. That's my opinion. I think it's easier for the public to know when to expect the Independent Ethics Board to meet. Okay. Other thoughts? Did Mr. Sims leave? I'm giving him a shout out and he's not even here. Yeah, okay, y'all let him know. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Any other thoughts? So I, I, you want me to t convert that to, a, you want to convert that to a motion? I, I move that we stay the third Tuesday of every month uh, and uh, f be flexible with the start time depending on when the, is it the transportation? Yes. Board? Uh, agency. What agency is meeting. So we would either be starting at four or five, depending on their schedule. Okay. And I, and, and if I would also recommend um, that we get that out. I know we do, but have that set at the beginning of the 2020 calendar year. Right. Actually, our, our uh, web page does actually list the meetings for the entire year Perfect. ahead of time. So uh, regardless of wh how, how they might move around. So the, the biggest confusion would be whether we're starting at four or starting at five, but that, they, that would be posted. And, and also in consideration of our potential adoption of the new process for considering um, hotline complaints, we would potentially need to be starting those meetings uh, in, sh in the shade in advance of our formal meeting when that's necessary. Right. And so when we have one of those, even if we were, it was a, a five to eight normal meeting time, we could still do four to seven because the first hour would be in a closed meeting exactly. in another room. Exactly. That's what you're saying. Yes, exactly. I got you. I got you. I'm tracking with you. I know. See? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, well, it take, I'm just slow. Yeah, I know. No, you're not slow at all. Just <laughs> okay. we're getting used to how each other works. <laughs> so, so Ms. Graham just moved what she just moved. Yes. Which I'm not going to repeat. <laughs> that we, I, I move that we maintain our third Tuesday of every month's <laughs> schedule recognizing that we'll need to be flexible as to the start time depending on the um, transportation agency's ending time. Right. Second. Mr. Payne seconds. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. And we have a meeting time. So that would put our February, so our February, oh, that's the, so the, that would be the same February date that Ms. Meadows Keefe had in her letter. So the third, what's the third? The, that, that would be the 18th. So we're going back now to the, the, uh, the new ethics officer. Could either start, if we, if we want to stick with city pay periods, could the start on February 1st or February 15th? Right. So the first, okay, so the third. And the and the the fifteenth is a Friday, or a, is that a Saturday? Is a Saturday also? So it would really be the seventeenth. So first day of work, February third or February seventeenth. The Miss Meadows Keefe's last day would be February the eighteenth, according to her resignation letter. So what say you in terms of the start date for uh, Mr. Powell if he accepts? 
I again move February 1st uh, start date. Okay, second. A second uh, from Mr. Ray. Um, any discussion of that? Well, could it be, uh, I think, what's that, Monday the 3rd? Could it actually be the 3rd? Well, it, the, yes, it would be. Monday um, the 3rd? It, it could be, but it, realistically, he's probably going to want to come in on the prior week, like on the, the, end, the end of January to do his paperwork. Because, there, again, there's going to be some paperwork that he's going to have to process through city personnel. So if we just, we match up with that, we'll match up with that pay period, however that works. Okay, that, so we have a motion, a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. So we will have him start uh, that first day of work that Monday, February 3rd. Um, and I, don't, I think for purposes of any benefits or whatever, I don't think there's a difference between the first and the third, so that's not going to matter. Um, where are on the agenda? That finishes item seven. Four. That puts us on item 11, the status of the ethics officer. Mr. Reed. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think at our emergency meeting we discussed uh, the status of the current ethics officer and how we wanted to proceed. I think there was a question on whether uh, a suspension with pay would be a possible option moving forward. I know that uh, Ms. Meadows Keith, uh, private attorney, is in the, the audience and has mentioned to the newspaper that she believes that would be an adverse action uh, prohibited under the statute. Um, I, I tend to agree. I think that the statute, and I'll just go ahead and read the statute to you, uh, actions that are prohibited, it says an agency or independent contractor shall not dismiss, discipline, or take any adverse personnel action against an employee for disclosing information pursuant to the provisions of this section. And then the other prohibited act is retaliation for disclosing that information. Uh, adverse personnel action is defined as discharge, suspension, transfer, or demotion. It does not distinguish between suspension with pay or without pay. Uh, therefore, I would uh, recommend that uh, we are almost to February 18th. I think it would be advisable to uh, stay the course um, and, and continue without taking any type of action that could be uh, seen as, as adverse in any possible way. Um, I know the issue was raised, and it was a legitimate concern on whether uh, this would create an appearance of a conflict if somebody with the city was the subject of a complaint and there's somebody that's in a position of some control over how that complaint is handled uh, that might have litigation against the city or how that could be perceived. Um, I think I'd mentioned at the last meeting uh, that back on October 23rd, I did reach out to Ms. Maddox to um, establish a procedure that we could put in place where any case that involved individuals within the jurisdiction of this board, uh, the ethics officer would recuse herself to avoid any uh, appearance of impropriety or conflict. And uh, Ms. Maddox assured that that would not be viewed as retaliation. Uh, her other job responsibilities would stay intact, and she, of course, would be paid at, at the same rate. There would be no effect there. Uh, but simply, it would be because we do act in a quasi-judicial uh, fashion, this would avoid any uh, appearance, as you know, with judges, the judges recuse themselves not just for conflicts, but for any appearance of conflicts. And uh, we wanted to take that same approach here. So um, what I would recommend this board to do, and I would uh, humbly ask an, a motion to be made by the board, is that the board make a motion to take two actions. One uh, would be to formally accept uh, Ms. Meadows Keith letter of resignation, which made her final date February 18th. We have essentially accepted it through action by advertising and now hiring a new position, but I think it would be advisable to accept that letter so there would be a firm determination that she will stay in her position through February 18th. No questions, um, and we could put that issue to rest so it doesn't need to come up again. Uh, second, um, I would ask this board just to formalize the agreement that I've made with Ms. Maddox that uh, Ms. Meadows Keefe be recused from any ingoing complaint, whether it be a sworn complaint, a hotline call, an anonymous complaint, an email, something dropped off in the office that involves um, any of the uh, elected commissioners or appointed officials just to avoid any appearance of impropriety or conflict. Uh, so I, I would uh, respectfully ask the board to take action on those two issues. 
So, so Mr. Reed, I just I want to clarify because we have now an expanded ethics ordinance that's about to go in, into effect. That the second part of that would be that she would recuse herself from any complaint, formal or informal, sworn or unsworn, involving a person within the board's jurisdiction, because the board's jurisdiction could be more, will be more, in pretty short order here, than just uh, elected and appointed officials. Is that correct? Uh, at the time that I made uh, an arrangement with her counsel, we had not, we did not have the extended jurisdiction. So at that time, it was the nine individuals on the wall. But if it's those boards wish, um, I could seek uh, whether that would be considered uh, friendly. I think it. Uh, um, I don't know if it's absolutely necessary. Uh, I think that really our issue is the appearance, uh, whether it would appear that she has a conflict, um, and, and I, I don't know if somebody maybe a managerial position within the board, whether that would rise to that level. But it's really, it's, it's the issue of appearance. And that was really, it's really up to the board on how you would wish to proceed. Okay, well, I'll withdraw my comment. Um, so we have uh, our board attorney's recommendation. Any comments? <coughs> Mr. Well, Chair? Uh, okay. Let me do. No, he's fine. Okay, Mr. Payne. One, one comment, uh, in addition to the uh, complaints that the ethics officer deals with, there are training responsibilities, and as I understand, it's traditional for there to be a training session for the elected officials and appointed officials in January. Um, I, I may be wrong about that, but if that's the case, I would want, I think it would be more appropriate to delay that until the new ethics officer is in place. Okay, so you're... you're it, expanding the concept to include training of elected and appointed officials, which also would be a good opportunity for the new ethics officer uh, if, they, if that can be delayed to, to be able to introduce himself to those folks. That would, that's uh, uh, going to be an important first friendly meeting for the ethics officer. Mr. Reed, is that you see an issue there? Um, no, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I think we just want to ensure that she's Continued, uh, she's allowed to continue her position, um, and I think this would be probably a good opportunity for a transition where we bring in a new ethics officer. Maybe it's something they could do together, or something that she prepares a new ethics officer to conduct with the uh, elected and appointed officials directly. Yeah, and she could continue her training, her scheduled training for other yes. uh, employees. Yes, okay. I, I believe she's continued to do so since we had our discussion in October. Okay. Any, uh, Mr. Smith? I'm uncomfortable changing anything, restricting anything. Um, if she's staying here until the time that she chose to resign, why amend any of the duties? Um, still hold her accountable to everything else. I don't want to do anything that seems as if we're restricting her because I don't want to teeter. Uh, close to anything appearing to be uh, retaliatory. That's that's just my mindset. I mean, I know she may be agreeing to it, but I don't even trust that. Mr. Smith, I think we have um, uh, Ms. Meadows Keefe's lawyer here present. How are you, Marie? Good to see you. Um, and as long as uh, Ms. Maddox and Mr. Reed have agreed upon this, I think we... Uh, we're working in the best interest of the board and of Ms. Meadows Keefe so that there aren't any additional questions that could be raised. I think it's, a, I think it's a pru a, a, an appropriate step to take given the circumstances for both parties. And if you have anything to say, I would welcome it. Sure. Yes, please. Yep. Yes, so you're on the record, please, ma'am. afternoon. I am Marie Maddox, and I represent Julie. And John and I had talked, and we have no problem with what Julie's been doing. And um, Mr. Chairman, I think that based on conversations you've even had with her, she has been voluntarily agreeing not to sit in certain cases. And that's the only thing that we had talked about that John and I had, that she, she knows <coughs> where she, how far she can go. She knows cases that she can't sit on, you know, the cases involving the mayor. Um, and there are others that I'm sure that she would voluntarily recuse herself from. So 
she's got good judgment on these things. The cases that she feels that she can't work on, you know, she's called me and said, you know, should I recuse myself? And is listening to what they are, she knows which one she cannot work on. And so, you know, I, I think that, that it's going to be on a case-by-case basis where she says, I feel comfortable, you know, I don't feel comfortable. And so that's how I'd kind of like to leave it. Um, I don't want to restrict her duties. I don't know whether, you know, it's, it's appropriate to say she can't train the, you know, folks coming in in, in January. I, I don't know that. Um, she's not here. I'm here because she is not able to be here to listen. And so she's got a very good relationship, um, Mr. Chairman, with you and with John and I think a lot of the other members. So I, I would kind of leave it to her as to what cases she can't work on and let her make that determination rather than, because I think it is on a case-by-case basis. I can't, I don't think you can say up front that it's going to be, you know, this whole stream of officers or this whole stream of folks. I think it's going to be on a case-by-case basis. That was, would be what my suggestion is. Ms. Maddox. Uh, just to be clear, the training I was talking about was for the current commissioners, mayor, and appointed officials. There will be no change. Nobody's new is coming in. And, that, and it may be very appropriate that she not do that. And so, you know, that's something I think that looking at the different issues as they come up, for example, that um, the mayor is going to be there and it may be a, more appropriate if somebody else does that. So but she's, you know, she's looking at this and making sure that she's not, you know, overstepping or doing something that would even give an appearance of impropriety. So, you know, I, I think she's had pretty good judgment in calling me and saying, you know, I think I need to recuse myself, and she has. Okay. So thank you for allowing me to speak on her behalf. Yeah. I, I would say my, my concern is not about the, the litigation. Um, it is that if this board received a serious complaint involving a serious ethics violation, I would not want us to be unable to act, or I would not want a defense of that per person be available to that person that this board, the bias of this board made it impossible for us to take action under our current authority and that would come down solely to the relationship of the uh, current ethics officer with um, city officials. So I, I, I see a genuine and severe risk to this board's jurisdiction and authority and credibility uh, in at least in some of the kinds of cases that where Mr. Reed suggested um, a motion. Please. Ms. Maddox, you... May I speak, Mr. Chair? Please. I have immense respect for you. Ever since I have been on this board, which was, I think, about a year ago, is when I first joined the board, my focus has always been <laughs> what is in the best interest of this board. Uh, it is in no way um, reflective on any of the actions that Ms. Meadows Keefe has undertaken. It's where we are today. And I have to say, I agree with the chair that I think is in everybody's best interest, including Ms. Meadows Keefe. You don't want to be put in a position where she's could be a, uh, could be could be uh, in any way accused of of not exercising good judgment on those decisions. So as long as we're limiting it to what Mr. Reed initially said, which are the appointed and elected officials, I think it's protection on both sides, and I think it would be in her best interest as well. I think if you are, as her lawyer, and very, she's very, yes? Oh, sorry. <laughs> and you're very, you know, very capable, um, could see the potential conflicts for her if she's trying to pick one, I mean, this is in her, this protects her in many ways as well. And we're talking about a limited number. Uh, and I think it would be in her best interest, but more importantly, my priority has always been what's in the board's best interest. I, I would agree, absolutely. The problem is doing a blanket prohibition, and that's my only 
statement. It's doing a blanket prohibition saying you can't do X, Y, and Z when that would not be a conflict rather than taking it on a case-by-case -case basis. And I would request that it be taken on a case-by-case -case, because I don't think that there are any of those cases that are pending right now. I could be wrong, but I didn't think that there were. That there, there would, are. there are. There are. Okay. And so, but I would, I would just look at it on a case by case basis. Well, I just, I again, um, and you know how I respect you. I think we 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 respect each other. Yes. We uh, that I do believe that it's leaving it up to a discussion every time this occurs will not be in her best interest nor the board's best interest. Okay. And you've got to take action on the board. You know, I, I I still think that it would be on a case by case basis, but I would respect whatever okay. decision that you make. Right. I and appreciate I'm sure that. that that she'll be able to work within the confines of whatever the board. And decides. and as you know, because I know you you read the Tallahassee Democrat, and you occasionally. I mean, I occasionally, you know, I I I felt like the board was in a conflicted position, um, continuing with her actively engaged. But I have taken the legal advice of our counsel. And I read your comments as well. I went back and I reviewed the statute. So I think this is a compromised position that's going to be in the best interest of everybody. And I will respect that, and I'm sure she will too. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. So, Mr. Reed, why don't you start again with your motion, and then we'll move on it. Or, or suggest it, and then one of us will make the motion, okay, I Okay, well, let me, and, and just if I could real quick, I think the, the recommendation I'd made is what Ms. Maddox and I had already agreed right. to. I understand. The issue of case by case that could be problematic is that the issue of confidentiality. If we disclose to see whether it's appropriate or not, have we just violated the confidentiality? So I think that does put us in a, in a, in a, a difficult position. Um, I don't need, think we need to expand beyond what was agreed Fine. upon in October, but I think it would make uh, logical sense for us to have parameters that protect everybody, but really, more importantly, protect. The process. The concern is: Have we built in an automatic affirmative defense for anybody who faces a complaint to say, "Oh, I can't get a fair trial because I can't"? Right. Whether whether it's a legitimate defense or not, I think we wanted to try to prevent that from being used if cases come our way. But the uh, again, the recommendation that I made for a motion would be that we accept the resignation submitted in July by the ethics officer with a resignation date uh, following the meeting on February 18th and adopting the um, procedures of recusal uh, agreed upon by Ms. Maddox and I uh, from October 23rd, where she would be recused from elected officials and appointed officials. Okay, comments from other board members? Um, Mr. Smith. <clears throat> Again, um, I guess when, when we talk about this process and it being protected, uh, just so I'm clear, how would that be adversely impacted um, if, if she's still doing the same job? Because I thought when she received complaints, she would have to. She made she made a recommendation. It wasn't the final, so we would have to see whether or not we thought it was worthy of, or if it was a violation, or if we need to look into it. So I don't see how I don't understand how the process would be adversely impacted. Um, maybe someone can explain that to me. Um, because we, she only makes recommendations. She working for us, so we we have the final say so about a case. Uh, we may not have always exercised it um, as assertively as we probably could have, but it's on us. I, I just have a problem with, especially that since we are in litigation, changing up anything that could. I would rather the onus be on her to recuse herself. Or if she does something that's inappropriate pertaining to the process, then that would be an issue that she has to deal with. I just don't want to be in a, in a position where we're changing up our processes, worrying about the press, uh, worrying about how things are perceived. Um, I just want to do what I think is the correct thing. And not being fearful of, I mean, we're in litigation. It happens all the time. Um, we're all big boys and big girls, and everyone has mutual respect uh, either side. That's just part of the process. I don't want to be handicapped and start changing up things. Are we going to do this all the time? Um, so that was some of the questions and concerns that I have. I, I would rather, again, the onus be on, on, uh, on her to recuse herself if 
we start changing up. I mean, I don't even know what disagreement looks like. That um, I don't know how it reads uh, with her attorney and our attorney. Um, I don't want to. I don't. I feel uncomfortable voting on something I haven't even seen. Disagreement. And may we may we may need another set of eyes. We have more eyes up here that can look at it. That may be that may be missing something that Mr. Reed is missing, or her attorney may be missing. Um, and no offense, but I'm. I'm always leery of what's presented by the adversaries uh, attorney. That's just me. Um, I would want to look at it first instead of sitting here and so voting and saying. So, uh, Mr. Smith, so what are you? What you're requesting is that we get something in writing in That's advance of voting on it, and maybe it's something that Mr. Reed and Ms. Maddox could go th review and agree upon. And not even Mr. Reed anymore. We we we, we just we're going with outside counsel. So I, oh, I want to okay. get their perspective. Yes, I was going to recognize you before we got through this. Um, I, I, have, I have a card from Mr. Bishop. Please, yes, I, you're recognized. I'm sorry. You're in this position because of a very strange set of circumstances. You're in this position because you had a city ethics officer who had uh, a relationship with somebody that she was overseeing. She had a responsibility ethically to determine whether that person violated ethics. You then had a circumstance in which you had the city ethics officer, without talking to you, take city tax dollars to join a political club. She didn't join it for one year, she joined it for several years. The excuse doesn't make any sense at all. You don't have to pay to be a member to go as a guest. It costs 25 bucks. And the city ethics officer should pay for that out of their own pocket. If any one of you want to belong to Tiger Bay, you should pay for it out of your pocket. It seems to me to be so illogical in non-common sense, that you're debating an issue in which you have a city ethics officer that has sued you in court, who doesn't have the shame, in my opinion, or the professional judgment to step away. She's already going to get paid until she leaves. Now, I personally think that the deal was negotiated with her to allow her to stay until February was a fatal mistake. I believed it at the time, I believe it today. You don't reward poor judgment, poor professional judgment, poor professional judgment by an officer of the court who is sworn to uphold those duties. You don't reward that person by giving them a long opportunity to decide when they're gonna retire. There isn't a single city employee in this city that does something wrong that gets to pick when they resign. If, Ms., if the city ethics officer had any sense of responsibility, she wouldn't put you in this position. She would take her pay, stay home, and start looking for another job. But it's her decision and her lawyer's decision to put you in as uncomfortable of a position as they possibly can. That is offensive to me. It is offensive to the taxpayers of this city. And it shames the reputation of you as the City Eth Independent Ethics Board if you allow yourself to be kowtowed by somebody that is suing you. Now, you're already being sued once. What difference does it make if you're sued twice? Let her attorney do what she wants to do, because she's aching to do it. She wants to do it. And you know what? She doesn't always win. Common sense, even among judges, even among juries of your peers, what do you think your peers would think if they sat and knew that somebody that worked for you was suing you? And if you took any action reasonable at all 
that there's going to be another lawsuit. Are you kidding me? What kind of drugs are we all on? There must be better drugs than me, because I tell you what, it doesn't make common sense. There is absolutely no reason. Her attorney says she has got good judgment. On the contrary, she has absolutely got, in my opinion, the worst professional judgment of just about any attorney that I've ever met. And for her to be your city ethics officer is a slap in the face, is an embarrassment for us all, and it's wrong. She doesn't have the judgment to make a case-by-case -case basis. She's already done that, and she's made two very bad decisions. You've got to do what is the right thing to do. Don't worry about lawsuits. Her attorney files lawsuits every day of the week. And again, she doesn't win them all. But you can't let somebody that works for you tell you when she's going to do what, when she's suing you. Nobody, nobody except her attorney is going to think that that makes common sense or that's right. So I just got to tell you, as I'm sitting here, I'm just, I'm aghast. I am shocked. And I can't believe, no, I can believe what I'm hearing. But you have an obligation to protect your own professional interest. She should not be doing, in my opinion, a single thing for you. Let her go home. Let her enjoy the last months of her retirement. She's going to get fully paid. And there's nothing discriminatory about that. And if her attorney thinks that it is, why don't you wait and see what a judge or a jury says about that? Because I think you have every right to do that. Nobody in this city is going to hold you responsible for telling an employee that sues you that you can't tell them what they're going to do going forward. You can. You should. And you must. Please, do the right thing. Questions of Mr. Bishop? Seeing none, um, further discussion? I Chair, okay. No, you go, you go. Mr. I Payne. I just wanted to, I think the discussion at our last meeting was, uh, was mentioned to defer our, our actions regarding Ms. Meadows Keefe until we have uh, Council selected to advise us on this, and I think that's a wise thing to do. Yes, I agree um, with Mr. Payne. And is there is it possible for? I mean, and I recognize <coughs> it's the holiday period and everybody's traveling, and um, for us to have an opportunity to speak to Ms. Menace at some point in a in a session about these issues. Uh, John, how, how quickly would Ms. Minnis be available, would you guess? I could call her this evening and see if we could put together um, an emergency meeting this, this week, if you would prefer. Uh, I know Mr. Smith leaves tomorrow. Um, I suspect there may be other people who have travel plans coming up here in yeah, the pretty near future. I think Mr. Ray leaves pretty quickly yeah. through the holidays. Yeah. I suspect we're talking about either late December or early January. Um, I go nowhere and do nothing, so I'm good. I'm good any day, uh, but um, uh, what what would be, with the exception of Miss McNeil, who gets a pass on this, I think, um, what would be people's availability prior to our uh, January the 18th? I don't know what day it is. Meeting. I, I return. I return on the 28th. 28th? Of, After uh, the 28th, Mr. Ray, you're back? I'll be back. I'll be flying back the 3rd. So I'll be back the 6th. Jan yeah. January, January the 6th. Um, I'll be back by January 6th, but I'm also available by phone. But if I may. Um, Please. Please, I think you that um, at the hearing, all the discussion, and I always try to be politically correct, of course, at my age, I keep telling you, at my age, I've earned to not, <laughs> that I don't necessarily have to be politically correct. Um, however, I do think that under the circumstances that uh, the agreement should, if there's going to be an agreement, it should be something um, done with our 
independent counsel because it is my understanding that uh, there is also some allegation, and with all due respect to Mr. Reed, because I have great respect for you, but there is some allegation concerning um, uh, Ms. Meadow Keefe and Mr. Reed. And so we are already under enough as it is, I think maybe to avoid even any other or additional appearance of impropriety, that maybe we do need to bring on our um, independent counsel sooner than later and to address that. And so I think that would be even for Mr. Reed's protection as well. Okay, so if we looked at January the 7th would be a Tuesday. If you say it is, I believe you, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm according, to, <laughs> according to the Google, um, Jan January 6th would be a Monday. Yes, we January shot for, 7th. For January 7th, uh, a quick meeting at 4 or 5 o'clock. Preference on time. I, I, I think this is a 45-minute meeting, so we don't need a big block of time. Exactly. So, five, say, five, 5 to 6 on Tuesday the 7th? Okay. I, th no. I think in a small room would be fine. Yeah. I, I don't... It, it, I, I don't see... For purposes of what could be a, a 20 minute meeting, it's probably not worth the aggravation. Um, so, 1 7 20 20, four, 5 to 6. And, and if Mr. Reed can tell, can uh, arrange with Ms. Minnis, if not, we'll, we'll come back at you. But we'll, do, we'll set that tentatively. Um, and we will get ad advice on specifically the issues that. Uh, Mr. Reed had suggested. <clears throat> um, I, I would just point out, based on one thing that was said, the the um, February the 18th date was not a negotiated date. That was simply handed to us in a resignation letter. No, I don't think any member of this board had any uh, input or say or knowledge of that date ahead of time, just, just so you would know. Um, any other discussion on this matter? Please. But he did pass the first round. Okay, I'll say that. Julie's not perfect, but she's done a good job for this board. And she's continued to do a good job for this board, notwithstanding the issues that came up with the mayor. And to do anything against her now in my opinion, based on the law, would be retaliatory. And I'm not making that as a threat. I'm making that as a general observation. She has done and is continuing to do a good job for this board. So you've got things that, you know, I can tell you one thing, sir. I bet you he can't stand up here and say he's done nothing wrong. I can't. So she's willing to continue. She's done that. She's on it. She's just happened to be because the meeting got changed. We're willing to try to work something out to try to restrict the cases that she's on. I've said that before. But to have this gentleman stand up here and to bash Julie again and again, which has happened repeatedly, you know, is just plain wrong. She's paid the consequences, you know, and so why would, why, why would someone like that be allowed to even stand up here and to continue to say things that are just disparaging towards her again and again? I would point out that it's a public meeting and we are about to take an action and I'm required by law, ma'am, to allow testimony prior to any action that this board takes. So if you're suggesting that we should violate the law, I would disagree with you. Mr. Yeah. Bishop, you're recognized. I, I think she made some excellent points. Look, I'm not perfect. You ask my wife, she'll tell you every single day, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. But when I make mistakes as a lobbyist, I pay for those mistakes. You ask any state legislator if they've had a lobbyist, write them a letter, an email, and tell them that when I testified, I made a mistake. You'll find that I have done that. I've been lobbying for 41 years. I only have one thing. That's my word. That's my integrity. And I didn't lose a single First Amendment right when I came here tonight, and neither did you. And you don't have the right to be treated like this by somebody that works for you. All she has to do is go home 
and enjoy her money. But in my opinion, she's twisted, and she's making life miserable for you, and she's embarrassing everybody in this community, and you know what? She don't care because she's got a lawyer that tells you that they're going to take action. Well, I've never met a lawyer that didn't say they wouldn't take action. And I used to work for the Academy of Florida Trial Lawyers, plaintiff lawyers. I worked for them for four years. I'm very proud of that. I've always wanted to be a lawyer. I didn't become one. But the truth of the matter is I made mistakes and I pay for it. I heard the comments by the city ethics officer at the last meeting. She wanted to wrap herself in victimhood. Look, she's the one that made her bed. She has to sleep in it. She has to lie in it. Nobody else. She's the one that created these problems. If she had good professional judgment, you wouldn't even have to be discussing this. And if she had any common decency, in my opinion, you wouldn't have to be discussing any action whatsoever because she would walk away. And 99 employees that sue their boss don't insist on staying there. They don't want to stay there because they know it's going to be an adverse relationship. So how strange does that make you feel to have an employee that's suing you still around? I tell you what, it would sure make me feel strange. But let me just, one more time, I've made a lot of mistakes. I make mistakes every day. I try not to make the same one twice. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I believe where we are is we are going to engage Ms. Menace and the Oslin McMullen firm because depending on what happens with the case, there may be other uh, resources that are needed. Um, we will attempt, we will tentatively schedule Tuesday, January 7th, 2020 from 5 to 6 in a, a room here on the second floor to be advised by our attorney in this case specifically as it relates to this case that will be the only matter of business before us um, mr reed can talk to Ms. menace ahead of time about his recommendation to us so that she is prepared to respond uh, given the the nature of the discussion tonight on this matter and uh, we will proceed from there on the seventh is, is that a, a fair summary for everybody I just have one Mr. question. Mr. Smith. Uh, so what's the final say about the resignation? I know that came up. Sticking to the yeah. February 18th. Yes. Well, the, so. the question, I mean, I think we have, we have accepted it in, in every form except through a, a motion and a vote. Um, so the question is then, uh, I think Mr. Reed was saying we go ahead and, you know, somebody moved <laughs> to accept the resignation as it was sent to us. Uh, mm -hmm. We have not... Um, in any formal way objected to it. Um, so I guess the question would be whether you want to leave that decision to, to January 7th or whether you want to proceed on that oh. tonight. I think that should be tonight. Yeah. I'll make the motion. Okay, so second. M M Mr. Ray moves that we accept the resignation that we got from our ethics officer back in, when, when was it, Mr. Reed, September? It was in July. In July, excuse me, July. I forget how far back that is. Um, <laughs> And uh, Ms. Graham, was that a second? Yes. I saw from you. Yes. Uh, any discussion? Uh, clarification. Mr. Payne. Is, is this, uh, how does that uh, address any uh, discussion that we'll have on the 7th regarding uh, suspension with pay or anything like that? Is, the, is, that, is that still open? Is that a possibility? Um, Mr. Reed. Um, yeah, I... One, I, I mean, I miss, miss, may have a different opinion than I would, um, but I think the statute's clear. But uh, we're not talking about discharge. I think the only issue that's been floated is possibly a suspension with pay, which would not affect the resignation date. Okay. And, of course, the other, the other possibility on that is if Ms. Meadows Keefe came to us and said, I would like simply to be placed on administrative leave, that's not a suspension. She requested administrative leave. My impression is that the board would say, okay. Um, but that, that's another matter that has not come before us. So I think the, the specific issue before us is if we accept the, the resignation letter, uh, which, which was, was, I don't know, four or five or six pages long, uh, 
but and, and said uh, of a wide variety of things, including her uh, the effective date of the resignation. Mr. Chair, if I could just also add that my guiding star ever since I joined this board has been what is in the best interest of the board, not what's in the best interest of our ethics officer, not what's in the best interest of any of us on this up here on this dais, but our responsibilities to the city of Tallahassee and what we've been tasked with doing. And I am proud of what we have accomplished in the last year. And so um, do I wish that we were not in the place we are today? Absolutely, I wish that. I don't think anybody, including Ms. Maddox, would wish anything differently. But how we handle this is very important for the board, not for any of us for the board. And so I think this is prudent to take this step to um, hear from our council in this, in this matter, and then we will be well advised in whatever action we end up taking after that council. Okay. So we, do, we have, I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion of the motion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. <clears throat> Motion passes. That moves us to item 12, which is the election of the chair and the vice chair. You remember our bylaws say that uh, we, they used to say we'd elect the chair and vice chair in January and they'd take over the meeting. We just would kind of pass the gavel, which seemed foolish because that, that new chair didn't have anything to do with that agenda. So the idea now is that we elect the chair and vice chair in, at, at the end of our December meeting. And then they, they come in setting the agenda, making, you know, kind of owning it, making it their own for the January meeting, uh, working with Ms. Meadows Keefe, they would do that. Um, so, uh, what are the thoughts of the board? Uh, Ms. Payne and Ms. Graham. Mr. Payne and Ms. Graham. Uh, just a clarification you right now have certain specific uh, tasks dealing with an open complaint. Uh, I believe you had something else that came to, uh, up today, tonight. Uh, uh, would the new chair take over those duties or would you continue those specific tasks? Well, I, I think for the, the matter that's in our closed session, that might, be, given the skill set of our new ethics officer, that might well be passed to that person because that's primarily investigatory in nature. So if we move slowly on that for the moment, we would save a bunch of money compared to going out and hiring an investigator tonight or immediately. So that would be my recommendation there. The other things, um, what I would plan to do is, con is, to the extent that I can, finish up things like the... Uh, in, in, anything that I've been working on or drafting um, and just I'll, I'll sit down, I'll take Ms. Barr's seat and the, the chair can call on me and, and I'll explain as much as I can. And I would point out, I was going to do this at the end, we do have two outstanding issues that have been around for a while that probably need to be followed up. I tried to go through all my notes from the last million years um, and that is um, the board's uh, status as it relates to offering whistleblower protections to people who file complaints with us, and I, I believe that there is a legal argument that we can offer that protection. And the other is um, we have discussed on numerous occasions uh, making recommendations to the city to strengthen the policies requiring the registration of lobbyists. Uh, that is also um, hanging out there as something that uh, we have talked about numerous times and committed to, to come back at, and we just have not gotten to those on our agenda. So. Yes, I'll continue, I'll, I'll continue to do whatever, uh, but then what I would do is, is I always do a list of, of the, the to-do list from the meeting. I'll type up my to-do list and uh, give it to Ms. Atkins and Ms. Meadows Keefe, and they can follow up with the new ethics officer, or the new um, board chair and vice chair. So. Mr. Chair, can we implore you to stay on? <laughs> Uh, I mean, at least, at least, um, could we uh, extend uh, the decision on a new chair and vice chair until after the decision is made? Who's going to try to fill? Which would never happen, but 
Ms. McNeil's seat, um, and also the new ethics officer, just for transition's sake, because it's a lot of new happening all at the same time. Now, all you have to do is say, no, I can't, and I completely understand. Okay, so I hear from Ms. Graham a motion that we delay the selection of the new chair and vice chair until our February meeting. Everything happens. Do we February. waive our bylaws? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, if other members of the board feel differently, I, but it, it, it just seems like we have a lot of transition currently, <coughs> and a lot of which your knowledge and um, you've handled so much in this past I year. I like you that's coming, still like me, please. Uh, again, this is everything that drives my comments before this board is what's in the best interest of the board. And I just feel like this is particularly, ta uh, uh, I don't want to use the word, I want to use the appropriate word. Uh, it's, we have a lot on our plate is I guess um, more than one word. But, um, and I think that we also, for those of us who sit on this board, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very big responsibility to take over as the chair and the vice chair. And, and unless is somebody really want to be the chair, is there anybody? I'm looking at, I mean, if, I mean, Ms. Mr. Smith, are you, I mean, are you interested in being, taking the chairmanship? Because that would make the most sense because you have sat next to the current chair as the vice chair. I don't mean to put you on the spot, uh, but, I, yeah, but I do think this is a conversation that we need to have, uh, it, and maybe what we do is delay that process. Um, I mean, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't be you, opposed to it. Okay. Um, That's great news. Uh, <laughs> as long as, you know, I could maybe appoint committee chairs within, or if someone uh, had a special project, and if we could take that on. That would be an easier transition, which would keep us within our bylaws still. We, we have in the past um, used... I didn't mean to put you on the spot, <laughs> either of you, actually, but I think it's, you know, in sort of sitting here and wondering, we have to have this conversation, and this is the only time we can talk to each other is when we're in a public setting, so... We, we have in the past used committees of one, since we can't really... If, if we have a committee of two or three members, then we have to have a meeting and a notice and all of that stuff, so... We've used like committees of one, like Ms. McNeil was a committee of one early on on our budget. So she went through and scrubbed things related to the budget and made sure that it was reported in a way that made sense and that, that we were adequately funded. Because in the first couple of years, it was a, we were a little dicey once or twice. Um, so we've, we've certainly done that. And, and, and my impression was that, that that committee of one concept worked well and that person could back, report back to the board and kind of own a, a very granular issue. Ms. Barr. Then I guess my question is, is that, are you all term limited? Only by rationality. <laughs> so there's no reason why. I, I don't think so, unless Mr. Reed, is there something in our bylaws? I, you know, um, I, I will admit that I find surprising things in our bylaws from time to time. You mean why why we're supposed to be voting tonight? Yeah, I mean, our, our bylaws say every yes, December we're going to pick a new chair and vice chair. It says in the last meeting of the calendar year, the board shall elect a chair and vice chair. That's uh, section four, subsection D. Um, and I think the recommendation that was made is that we do have the ability to under Article 11, uh, Article 11, section B, we can waive or suspend the rules, which I think is what the suggestion was to reconvene in January, vote January to take effect for February. But as far as the term, the term is set to expire at the end of the year, and we are to take the vote at the last meeting of the calendar. So if we were to schedule another meeting in December, we, we would do it then. But as of now, this is the only meeting remaining for the month of December. So it's either tonight under our bylaws or waive the bylaws. Well, I, I, I agree with Grant. Um, I think we need to weigh the bylaws because that is a lot of new stuff, you know, or suspend. You know, I think it would be an easier transition. In other words, Ms. Barr and I are not willing to let you out, Mr. <laughs> Chair. But, but, but as long uh, as we're all in agreement, um, I do think, Mr. Smith, um, 
I thank you for your willingness to assume the chair. And I think we, <laughs> I think we can, can potentially work. Could we, Mr. Reed, I'm, could we make a motion that as of X date, that would be the case instead of it occurring pursuant to the bylaws, but it could occur in February rather than January? Is that completely mess everybody up? Um, you mean? You I mean, I mean, could we move? In, because we are in this period where we have so much going on. Could we say that the new chair, everything new, will start in February instead of January? Because we'll have a new ethics officer, we'll have a new chair, we'll have worked through these issues. Everything will be wonderful, and life will be great in every way. New Year, 2020. But in ha instead of having that start in January of 2020, we'll have it start in February 2020. So you'd like to vote tonight, but just. But then, so we have Mr. Time. Smith as the new chair, and we have to select who who wants to be the vice chair. Raise your hand, mm -mm. Mr. Ray. Mr. Ray. Excellent. We now have our new chair and vice chair as of February 2020. If we move to uh, waive the bylaws, that it has to occur in in January 2020. I think I'm making total okay. sense. Does anybody else think I'm not? <laughs> I agree. Okay, can we, can we just have, let, let's open a discussion of the concept, okay. and then I will restate what I think is Ms. Graham's motion. Okay, it's an awesome motion. I, well, all of your motions are always awesome. I just don't always understand them. <laughs> well, that's keeping you on your toes. <laughs> okay, any discussion of this concept? Okay, so Ms. Graham has moved. And I didn't, wasn't, and there, there are people behind me, too. Mr. Payne, are you interested in me? I think uh, <laughs> the two who have been mentioned are. are uh, and and th there, there is a logic, because I was the vice chair uh -huh. that first year and Makes then became sense. the chair. So I think the vice chair becoming the chair is an appropriate punishment. <laughs> um, so I think if I can put all this in one motion, if, this, if you guys are Good comfortable, luck. I, I'm going to try to restate. Ms. Graham's motion is that we waive our bylaw to tonight elect Mr. Smith as chair and Mr. Ray as vice chair to begin their tenure at our regularly scheduled February meeting. Yes. Is that succinctly put? Yes. Okay, that's Ms. Graham's motion. Ms. Barr's second. And Ms. Barr's second. I used to like you too, uh, but, that's, but now, now I like you, but for a month. Um, any discussion of that motion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Okay. You know how we worked all that through? It was great. I noticed you didn't offer to be chair. No, I don't have, I can't. <laughs> um, Okay, that's uh, M Mr. Wilcox. I have been holding your card patiently as you sit there patiently <clears throat> waiting to patiently tell us something patient. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the board. Um, you know who I am with Citizens for Ethics Reform. Uh, we, we just want to thank Board Member McNeil uh, for your service on this board. You've been with the board from the beginning, and, and you've been invaluable as the board has developed. Uh, we also thank you for your work on the ethics ordinance that was recently passed by the city commission. You have done your time, <laughs> and uh, you should be proud of what you've accomplished. Uh, thank you, and we wish you the best in your future endeavors. Here, here. You're not supposed to applaud. One for you. No, she should applaud for herself. Well, that's she that's should. true. Okay, so then what you will probably see on our January agenda is those two issues I mentioned is outstanding: whistleblow that our ability to offer whistleblower protection and something to begin a discussion of uh, city policies on registration of lobbyists. I'm going to recommend that for the the first agenda for the new chair and vice chair, since you will have a new ethics officer that you assign that new ethics officer the task of briefing the board on the new ethics ordinance, because what a wonderful training opportunity for him to have to learn it and teach us the detail of what it says. 
Um, with that, anything else for the good of the order? Anything for a future agenda? Obviously, anything you want on the next month's agenda, you simply email Ms. Meadows Keefe and she will put it on. Uh, I think the chair needs to own the agenda. Um, anything else? Any other public comment? Seeing none, uh, our next meeting, Ms. Atkins, will be the third Tuesday of January. So if I announce that now, it'll be January the January the 21st. Um, the, it'll be here on the second floor, but the, the, the time and room might be subject to some slight tweaking. It'll either be at four or five o'clock, either in this room or one of the, the two adjacent rooms. And with that, we are adjourned. <laughs>